Okay, second enzyme um, screencast. This one's about uh, the active site and inhibitors. So here's my normal action of uh, an enzyme. We've got a substrate, and the substrate will bind in that active site there and go into this position here. And there it is bound in the active site. And once it's bound in the active site, uh, we're going for this uh, induced fit. So the active site actually folds around the substrate to make it an absolutely perfect fit in there. Uh, and the enzyme will act on the substrate. And in this case, it cleaves it into two small pieces. And those are released. And that will allow more substrate to go into the active site. Uh, so that's normal action of an enzyme. If we move forward, we can talk about inhibition. The first type of inhibitor is a um, competitive inhibitor. So here's the inhibitor. It fits into the active site, but the enzyme doesn't recognize it and can't cleave it, so it just blocks the the active site. Now that can come out again and go back in again, so it just gets in the way. Okay. Now, if you have a competitive inhibitor like that, then it is going to be the concentration of the inhibitor compared to the concentration of the substrate. So they're both trying to get in there. If that get in, gets in, it will bind and be cleaved. If this gets in, then the substrate can't. So there's a competition. The more substrate you have, the less effect the inhibitor has. Um, so the substrate concentration still matters, uh, but the inhibitor will compete directly for the active site. Now compare that to uh, non-competitive inhibitors. Non-competitive inhibitors will bind to the um, alternative site, an alternative site on the enzyme. So if we produce an inhibitor molecule, that will actually bind in this position. And on binding to the site, it induces a conformational change in the enzyme. So the active site has now changed and the substrate won't uh, be bound anymore. So the substrate can't fit into the active site anymore because the binding of the inhibitor has changed the shape of the active site. Now, as you can see, there's no competition here. It's purely that the inhibitor has inactivated the enzyme as far as the substrate is concerned. It doesn't matter how much substrate I shove in now, I'm not going to get activity. So this type of inhibition is quite useful because you can inhibit the enzyme with fairly low levels of inhibitor um, relative to the levels of the substrate. So that's substrate binding, competitive inhibitors and non-competitive inhibitors. Competitors inhi competitive inhibitors bind in the active site. Non-competitive inhibitors bind elsewhere on the enzyme.